Hey, hey, howdy y'all. My name's David. I'm with Country Boy Computers BG. Welcome to the channel. If you haven't been following along, I've been doing uh, a lot of testing on Olama on all kinds of GPUs. Uh, new 50 series, uh, some old 3060s, old AMD RX 570s, uh, Polaris architecture from 10 years ago. And today we're going to be testing Vega 64. This is the Frontier Edition card. It's got 16 gigabytes of free RAM. It was $200 and I paid 100 bucks for this Vega 64 8 gigabyte version. The reason I didn't go ahead and get two 16 gigabytes is because there's a little bit of a hole there but when you jump from the 14B models which are about 9 gigs uh, up to the 32B uh, models which are about 20 gigs so it doesn't really make any difference between having 24 and 32 gigs available on this dual card setup. So anyway, welcome. Let's get to the testing. All right, welcome back. Here we are. We're all set up with the first card. And that's a pretty neat looking card, if you must, you must admit. Um, it's pretty cool. It's got these LEDs on the back right at the PCIe uh, power plugs. And as the card gets more juice and is utilized more, uh, it's like a little indicator, kind of like a radio EQ. Uh, more power, more lights light up. But anyway, back to the point here. Let's get it tested. Uh, we're going to start uh, with the 14B. Since we're working with 16 gigs of RAM, that 14B is about 9.5 gigs. And we've got single card. So let's get her going. I'll be right back with you. We'll see how it does. Let's look at those lights. Oh yeah. Full blast. All right, it's finishing up its very last run. I didn't check out the wattage over here. I don't know if y'all can pick that up. It's running about 315 watts. And again, if you haven't uh, been following along, I'm running into the same issue I did with those uh, Instinct cards. We are getting some pretty hefty throttling. Uh, the temperature has gotten up to 83. And we're wrapping up here, and our speeds are falling off. So, probably in the dual card setup, it's not going to be stressed so hard because they don't run full speed. Uh, just because of the bottleneck of having to communicate back and forth. But this card I thought was going to have a good, I mean it does, that's not bad, a 14 billion uh, parameter model. We're pulling 18, it was almost 19 until it got too hot, and now we're down in the 17s. Uh, but if you look up on Tech Power Up on this card, uh, the bus interface is huge, 2048 bit bus, and it's HBM2 uh, memory on the card. Uh, but the bandwidth, because it's clocked so low, is 483 gigabytes a second. So I haven't done any overclocking on any of these cards. I just set them up and let them roll. And there you see it's finished up. Um, anyway, so Wattman, I, I don't know. I haven't flashed the BIOS on this card. I haven't done anything. I just stick them in and let them run uh, with their stock settings but I didn't touch on so the benchmark that I'm running is just a quick uh, Python script it simply opens uh, the model or loads the, the model in a llama in this case it's Quinn 3 14 B and it asks explain the fundamental principles of quantum computing including superposition and entanglement and discuss the primary challenges in building a large-scale quantum computer and then it just sits back and waits for a full response it doesn't uh, calculate to a certain number of tokens or anything like that. It just simply uh, waits until the model is done responding. And then it calculates uh, time to the first token and then the total tokens or the tokens per second throughout the response. Uh, so that's our first run. Let's look at the second card in here and see how that does. Alright, we've got our second card loaded up. Uh, in there again, that's just a straight Vega 64, it's the 8 gig model, and I'll show you on the Rockim info. It's the same 
graphics. The reading graphics. I think that's my internal. 1036. That's the 9700X. There it is. RX Vega. Graphics 900. Graphics 900 Vega Frontier. Sorry, just wanted to show you that same card, just different, um, different amounts of RAM. So let's stop the server. Set up the server. Launch the benchmark. Now I was talking about overclocking. Of course, if the card's already getting um, maxed out as far as the heat um, it's throttling overclocking is not going to do anything for you but I haven't done any overclocking on any of these dual card setups so what I was trying to get to is maybe um, maybe there's uh, some upward mobility there with the performance uh, let's see the Frontier it's still not running quite full. And the second card's doing a little better. Of course the power draw, they never work full blast when they're getting dual cards. So we got 505 watts going with these two. And then I got something here in the box to show you here in just a bit. A little surprise for later. All right, it is finishing up its last pass, and I thought I would just kind of show you what that looks like on a dual card setup. That card just doesn't go full speed the whole time. It's you know back and forth, pinging each other, waiting for that memory response. 430 watts at the wall. So I thought I'd give you a little insight. So, yeah, I'm looking over here. I'll save it for the end, but we're we're running running into that throttling issue with this Radian Frontier card. Again, I haven't done anything with Watt Man. I didn't do any undervolting or anything like that. Everything's just bone stop. But what we have here is something that I was excited about, and that so these are the Vega Ten. It's Vega 64, but it's the Vega 10 architecture. And what came after that was Vega 20. So this is the Radian 7. And there was a seller that I found who had four of them. And i that's exactly what I was looking for. Because these are two slot graphics cards. They have proper ventilation. And I alluded to this a few videos ago but I want to try all this testing you know I've got the latest gen AM5 uh, platform right now the Tai Chi Lite uh, X870E is what we've been benchmarking this is an X99 platform and I'm sorry for the poor lighting this is the Asus X99E WS so that's the workstation and what I'm thinking here is that because this board has four full speed uh, PCIe lanes all right the CPU is the 5930k which has 40 CPU lanes so how can you do 4 times 16 with you only got 14 well this motherboard if you look it up has two PLX chips on it which is a PCIe switch and somehow it opens up full 16 lanes to four slots so I'm excited to see if that's going to add latency to the response time of our modeling or is that motherboard going to just add latency or give us better response time we'll see uh, I'm excited about it, but I'm going to run all the 5090, 5080, 5070 Ti's, all the stuff, the new CPUs, GPUs, through this old X99 platform as well, 
again the goal of this project has been to find a really cheap affordable anybody can do it AI server rig that's you know less than five hundred dollars well less if possible and that's the goal this whole time so anyway we're that's that that's just a little uh, preview of what's to come next week hopefully so this is finishing up and I'll just go ahead and show you you can see it started off eight and a half now it's, then it was less than eight now it's almost down to seven and the response time shows you there the first iteration was three minutes and 35 seconds the last one was five minutes so we are we're overheating and that's unfortunate because uh, I'm not gonna do I want to keep everything the same I don't want to be um, underclocking uh, overclocking doing afterburner and Whatman and what have you but there's the Vegas 64s coming soon Vegas sevens one two three and a four card setup with our x99 platform so appreciate your all's time again y'all have a good night we'll see you soon